Welcome to the House of Ham. I'm Bob WV7W, and today we're going to go over something that might be of interest to most of you existing hams out there, and that's how do you renew your license? There's not a lot of coverage out there in YouTube land, so I've got an expert with me who just so happens to have to renew his license right now, and he's going to go through that exercise, and we're going to go through it. And that is my good friend Stephen WM7X. Stephen, welcome, and welcome to the show. Hi, Bob. So um, what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to go over a couple things real quick. So um, first thing, you know, everybody should already know this, but in case you don't, how long is a license good for? Currently, the FCC authorization that you have is good for 10 years. And simply upgrading your license does not reset your renewal date. So keep your eyes peeled on the expiration date of your current operating privileges. Oh, thank you, Stephen. That's a really good point about the uh, the upgrading, not not renewing that. Of course, also, when you renew, you don't have to pay, or I'm sorry, when you upgrade, you don't have to pay the fee. Now, when you redo, when you renew, you do have to pay the fee. And when that fee is currently? The fee currently is $35. That was beginning to be assessed on April the 19th of 2023. And so, and so kind of as an aside, for those of us with vanity call signs, we used to have to pay a fee every time we renewed, I think it was $20, every time we renewed to keep our vanity call sign. And now that's just rolled into that same, we pay the same as somebody that has an issued call. Absolutely. The cost for the initial vanity call sign request is the $35, as you know. However, once you've got that vanity call sign in hand, renewing it is just the same as your the ham next to you who has the sequentially issued random call sign. We all pay the $35 renewal fee. Yeah. And I believe that the so if you get a vanity call, your license expires 10 years from that date because you paid the fee, if I remember correctly. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So basically, every time you pay the fee, that now that's when you reset your license, <laughs> your your date. So the last question that I know a lot of folks will have is, how early from your expiration date can you start renewing your license? Can you go through this process we're going to go through today? Many of us watch that expiration date get closer and closer and closer. However, you cannot take action on that until ninety days prior to your expiration date. So anytime 90 days prior, and even later you can renew it. However, you cannot operate once your license expires. Right, once that date on your, on your current license is passed, exactly, unless, you, unless you've gone through the exercise that we're gonna go through here in a minute. Right. All right, well, let's go ahead and let's go through this process. Now, the system that you have to get into to do all this is, so to begin, we'll log into our FCC license manager. A simple Google search will take you there. But we'll link it up this... in the description too, so you, you don't have to hunt it down. Perfect. Okay, so now that we're at the license manager, we're going to want to log in with our FCC's uh, FRN number, our federal registration number. This is mine, and my password has already been applied, and I will submit. This is logging me into my license manager where I can update my address. I can do many things with my license. I can even request a new vanity call sign. However, in this case, we're going to attempt our renewal since okay. mine expires in just a couple of weeks. So Stephen, if somebody doesn't know their FRN, where can they get that? Great question, Bob. By logging into the FCC's uh, wireless search engine here, you can search by call sign for my particular call sign and press enter. It will take the system a few moments to generate my FRN number. So for those of you who do not know your FRN, it's either pre-printed on your current license. Make sure to pick out the FRN and not your file number. And it's also available here at wireless2.fcc.gov which is kindly provided in the video's description. Oh, there we go. Looks like it's up there. So I've simply double clicked my own FRN number and copied it with a right click and copy. I've pasted that into the FCC's license manager along with my password to get me to 
my licenses at a glance. From here, because I am within my 90-day renewal period, on the right side of my screen, I have several options I can do to work on my license. Update my name and mailing address. Renew, I can prompt a cancellation. I can even request a new vanity call sign request or the next random one. However, in this case, I'm going to tap on Renew. My current privilege is this, and my current license and address is listed. I'm going to tap on Continue. Am I exempt from application fees? I am not. Surprised it even asks then. <laughs> I'm surprised too. My personal information here is listed along with my publicly listed postal address where I receive my mail, and my current email is also listed. I'm going to tap on continue. That's a verification stage. This is an application and the FCC does require a question of their applicants to be answered. Has the applicant or any party of this application been indirectly uh, or indirectly controlled by the applicant ever been convicted of a felony in any state or federal court? I can happily answer no. <laughs> By tapping on next, uh, the radio service, my application is being submitted for is for the vanity service because I have a vanity call sign. Uh, if you have a vanity, great. If not, uh, either way, it will list which uh, license class you have. My screen is simply different because mine is a vanity. Again, this is a verification of all of the information that's going to be on my application form to renew my current operating privileges. I'm continuing now to certify by entering my name, my middle initial, and my last name. I have no title I'm going to go by. I'm going to submit my application to the FCC. My application's been submitted. That part's done. That's step one of two. What needs to be completed next is we need to actually pay for that $35 application fee. I'm going to do that next by tapping on continuing to course the commission registration system for payment completion. So in this case, by logging into our CORS account with our current password, we will now have some information displayed under our FRN Financial. Uh, again, they want to make sure it's us. So we're going to request another security code to be emailed to us. I'm now waiting for an email from the commission with a six digit number to verify that I'm who I say I am. Having just received my email from the FCC, I will paste in my six digit security code, verifying to the commission I am who I say I am. At this time, I will handle some FRN financial matters. The financials is that I have a payment pending for my application. We're going to view and make payments related to my current call sign and current FRN. At this time, the commission does tell me that I have a total amount due of $35. It was created on this date, and so far it's not been paid. I'm going to tap on the link that says make payment. I have some choices here of which FRN to pay on, I'm going to select the FRN related to my own amateur radio call sign. And that's because you have the one for the repeater, right? That's correct. So most most amateurs, unless I guess if you had a, uh, well, actually, even if you had a uh, GMRS license, it would still be under the same FRN. More than likely, right. there are some who have a different FRN uh, for their GMRS as opposed to their amateur. So make sure you're paying on the right one. Yeah, yeah. you don't The want one to... that has a payment due. <laughs> In this case, I'm going to continue to pay by a debit or a credit card. They do take automatic ACH payments from your bank account. However, I'd prefer to handle this transaction uh, with just my credit card in my back pocket. And we've intentionally uh, hidden this information, so don't think you're going to get Steven's credit card number and be able to go and buy stuff. <laughs> Bob, I doubt you'd get far with it anyway right now.
as we populate a few of the addresses related to my credit card information. We do reside in the United States, in the state of Washington. Okay, it looks like you're... Yep, this is a review screen, Bob, for oh, okay. the remittance that we're about to provide to the FCC. They will be charging my plastic card $35 for my renewal fee related to my renewal of my amateur license. I authorize the charge to my card for the above amount in accordance with my credit card. We're going to tap on continue. It will take just a few moments. I've now got a receipt from the FCC indicating I have paid. This is my treasury tracking ID. Nothing we need to be concerned about other than the fact that keep an eye on your credit card or debit card for a $35 fee to come out. I'll be doing the same. And the current time for me in the Pacific time zone is 3.30 in the afternoon. This application will process overnight tonight at 2 o'clock in the morning Eastern or 11 p.m. Pacific time. And I expect my license to be renewed by tomorrow morning. Excellent. So I'd like to say simple as that, but that's a little bit more of a process. And I think that's why some people are confused is that it's not, it's not simple. It's not, I mean, it's not like going and just, you know, paying your, paying for something on Amazon. I mean, there's a few more steps. I'm glad you referenced Amazon. We're all familiar with adding things to our cart. And then checking the doorstep to say, where is it? Yeah. Uh, this is something we only do, obviously, only ten, every 10 years. And although I'm familiar with the process, even I had a few hiccups during that process. So for users watching the video, don't be discouraged. It certainly isn't the friendliest website in the world. Again, it's, it's the government, right? Right. Uh, and, and actually, so be patient the, uh... with it actually the friendliest two websites because you actually had to go to two different websites to be able to carry this out it's not even one that's very true and so don't be alarmed when you encounter a small hiccup or be discouraged because although there are some organizations who will kindly charge you for the the uh to renew your license for you in your behalf uh, it can't be done simply and by saving quite a bit of money, uh, you can actually do it yourself. Right. And we here are happy to help you. All right. Well, thank you, Stephen. I think this is uh, this is going to be uh, useful to a lot of the viewers of my channel and, and a lot of amateurs out there that, you know, like you said, it's every 10 years. So, you know, if you, you, it's been a while for, you know, a lot of us that, that have to renew. I mean, I just renewed mine a year and a half ago, but that time goes by and then you're like, Oh, now what do I do? And so I think this was a very helpful uh, thing to, to help people out and be able to, you know, to get this taken care of so you can enjoy your amateur radio privileges for another 10 years. And by doing it yourself and doing it for free, uh, you're not having to pad somebody else's wallet. <laughs> and undoubtedly this process, by the time I need to renew again in 10 more years, rest assured it's going to be different yeah and so stay tuned there'll be more videos as the process changes uh by way of bob's channel here uh we'll be sure to keep you all updated on the changes that are happening and and uh any fluctuations in the process because again lots can change in just 10 simple years yep, yep. absolutely all right. Well, thank you, Stephen. I appreciate you coming on the show and uh, and providing this valuable information to the amateur radio community. Um, if you if, if you have uh, any questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments. And until next time, this is WV7W73.